We usually play this right after Thanksgiving when the war is officially launched. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Brandon. But... I mean, I probably have. You know, the war on Christmas has been raging for as long as I've been alive. That's right. And uh, back in, I think this was back in, um, gosh, I don't know. We were playing it like um, in 2012 as a... Uh, um, as a sentimental uh, thing in 2012. So this was this was probably back in 2004 or five. So I look a little bit uh, younger. I don't want anybody to get too dis disturbed by it. And I got invited on to CNN to talk about the war on Christmas. And, um, and uh, I, of course, I was invited on with the head of Concerned Women of America. This is a right-wing organization and its president, uh, a man named Bob Knight. Ah, mm. yeah, a Which, man. That's what yes. Right, that's here is that uh, clip. It was with I can't remember who the the host was, uh, but uh, here it is. Or on Christmas, and a uh, hundred billions of dollars. Stop, of stop, 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 stop. Go back uh, another uh, couple of seconds. Get back a little bit more. Sorry. Try it there. Yeah. Uh, go back. Oh, I see you. Go back. Go back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Bob Knight right there. Yeah. Concerned Women of America, of course. Keep going. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, wait. This is not the one I sent you. Okay, that's why you shouldn't do... Uh, keep Matthew going back. Film guy ripped go back, your go back, from go this. back, go back. Just start, start at the, the beginning. beginning. I, I didn't... I, 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 I said one minute in on the one that I sent you. Okay, go ahead. Right there. Is that Nancy Grace? Well, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays? A Christmas tree or a holiday tree? Which should it be? Depends on whom you ask. We've seen controversy, most notably prompted by the White House. It sent out cards, this card, matter of fact, wishing a holiday season of hope and happiness. No mention of Christmas. Some thoughts now on the subject. Sam Teeter hosts the show Majority uh, Report no, on Air America Radio. Pause it for one second. Now, I should tell you a couple of things. One, this is on CNN. They're taking this this seriously at this time. They, and understand this was raging. This is just to give you a sense of just how nuts things were. The other thing you should know is I got very lucky in this situation because they were supposed to go to Bob Knight first, but his microphone didn't work. Mm. So in like the last second, I heard the producer in my ear, we're going to go to you first. And that was really problematic for Bob Knight. All right, go ahead. Bob Knight is the director of the Culture and Family Institute. It's affiliated with the Christian conservative organization, Concerned Women for America. Gentlemen, great to have you with me. Thank Thanks you. for having us on. All right, well, let's start with the holiday <laughs> card. What do you think, Sam? Well, uh, listen, you know, as far as the war on Christmas goes, I feel like we should be waging a war on Christmas. I mean, I believe that Christmas, it's, it's, it's almost proven that uh, Christmas has uh, nuclear weapons, can be a, an imminent threat to this country, that um, they have operative ties with terrorists. And I believe that we should sacrifice thousands of American lives uh, in pursuit of this war on Christmas and uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money. Well, Sam, is it a war on Christmas, a war on Christians, a war on po over political correctness, or just a lot of people with way too much time on their hands? Well, I would say probably, if I was to be serious about it, too much time on their hands. But I'd like to get back to the operational ties between Santa Claus and Al Qaeda. <laughs> I don't think that exists, Bob. Well, uh, we have Help intelligence. Me out here. We have intelligence. You, we have do, intelligence, you have intel, like and where yeah. exactly does your intel come from? Well, we have tortured an elf, and that's—it's uh, actually how we got the same information from Al Libby. That's exactly the same way the Bush administration got this uh, info uh, about the operational ties between. Al-Qaeda and Saddam. Okay, Bob Knight. Uh, Sam is, is tying in now the lack of information regarding weapons of mass destruction and yeah. somehow moving that into it's Santa not, Claus. Oh, All right, help me out here. What's going on? I mean, is, is this a, a, a war on Christians, a war on Christmas? Is this too much political correctness? Yeah, that, well, it was very, first I want to compliment him on his, on his dry humor, but uh, this is actually a very serious subject because a lot of people are waking up to realize that the war on Christmas is really... Uh, the culmination of a war on faith and the idea that the public square has to be cleansed of any religious expression, particularly Christian religious expression. You know, at one time, Happy Holidays was a welcome addition to Merry Christmas, so you wouldn't say the same thing over and over again. But a lot of people now see it as a substitute, and it's very gratuitous at times. And it's out actually insulting when you're talking about Christmas Day or a Christmas tree and you can't bring yourself to use the word for fear of offending someone. Uh, in the name of diversity, we're a less free country when that happens. It, Pause it for one second. Sam. Pause it for one second. 
Does any of that sound familiar to you? It's just weird. Like, if, if, like you could put Barry Weiss and just move her lips like this, or any of those IDW people, or any of these like, uh, you know, so-called First Amendment people, or all the people who are complaining about the woke culture. There was not nobody ever said the word woke in 2005. But this this has been relentless. This is all the same. It is all the same. The talking points are just slightly, slightly nuanced in their difference. But it's all just coming from an attack on right wing fundamentalism on some level. But just uh, play it out here because things get a little bit. um, uh, I enjoyed this. Let's put it that way. And because, I mean, this is a time where I. If anything, we want to be even more sensitive to diversity, considering everything that's happening with regard to war on terror. We're learning so much more about different religions, different ethnicities, and trying to become more of one versus uh, being segregated. Yeah, well, Kara, I mean, listen, the, uh, I would like Bob to tell me who is the person who has been offended by uh, someone saying Merry Christmas to them. I've never met that person. I don't celebrate Christmas, but if someone says Merry Christmas to me uh, and I either think, well, it's a little bit odd. It's like me saying happy birthday to you on my birthday. But, uh, you know, no one cares. But I'll tell you this. As we wage the war on the war on the war on the war on Christmas on our radio show, News Corp, Fox News, those people who have started this uh, entire uh, uh, war on Christmas meme, fake war, they're having a holiday party. President Bush saying happy holidays, Tokyo Rose, Laura Bush, saying happy holidays to her dogs in the video. I'm sure you've seen it. I mean, these are the things that we should be talking about when we are waging this war in Iraq. We should be equating it to the war on Christmas. What else would Bob Knight have an opportunity to do? How else would he get on television if he wasn't pretending to be attacked? You know, this would be funny, except it is serious to a lot of people who have seen their faith (laughs) cleansed from the public square systematically. Are you suggesting, Bob, that someone can't celebrate Christmas in America? I mean, tell me about about the person who can can escape these celebrations. Get a word in here. Go Uh, ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. I'm talking about things like in Ridgeway, Wisconsin, where the school children in the public school were told they couldn't sing Silent Night. So they substituted O Cold Night. You know, I think when you take Jesus out of anything, it gets pretty cold, uh, so it's apt. But it's outrageous. They had children actually singing a bastardized version of Silent Night. Well, Bob, uh, you see, this Christmas may come as a shock to you, Bob. Holiday trees. But, it's but I don't consider Jesus the Messiah. And so if you're going to ask me to praise Jesus, I'm going to be a little offended. Well, I'm now, gonna... I don't think the singing of the song, that you can find other songs to sing. So what about Silent Night? So, so what? So because you're offended, none of those other kids can celebrate the great heritage of Christmas I'm not the one who said they couldn't music. do that. No, I'm not the See, one who said that. See, you're a Grinch, But you're trying to force... Why are you trying to force conversions on people? Let me ask not you guys. Let me, let me, converse, you are singing sir. a Christmas carol. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me ask. Let me ask you guys about the pressure that's been put right. on on people stores. People can example. go and look up the rest of that. Um, I at one point accuse him of. Uh, of I think calling me a Nazi and uh, and I wasn't a hundred percent I was a little disingenuous when I was doing that but it, I was trying to make a point. I just have to, I'm glad I'm here because you know the greatest de- the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was yep. convincing people that the war on Christmas does not exist. Yeah. And you know while everyone is in the streets concerned about their brains being fried by Havana syndrome and you know Havana syndrome however you choose to pronounce it you know Christmas tree syndrome is slowly and insidiously affecting millions of Americans in this holiday season. And, you know, Sam, you think it's all fun and games when the, you know, moms against drug and drunk driving in Christmas trees or whatever uh, is a dude and makes fun of you on CNN. But this is a real big concerned women of America. Yes. Concerned women of America associated with the drunk driving. Yeah. Although I, I feel like he seemed like he was maybe trying to loosen up a little. Bit. He, he seemed women like of he was a little mad. Duh. Right. Oh, yeah, he got mad when I started accusing him of, of calling me driving. a Nazi. <laughs> uh, that, and, and he, he claimed that he did. Because he, he brought up, of course, um, what happened in The Sound of Music, uh, which, of course, is uh, incredibly relevant to... That seems to be also another through line with right-wingers. They love uh, references from movies and movie try to references. apply them. Yeah, I mean, the, again, like, if you were to have this debate now, we'd be talking about Thanos. Yep. It's just really interesting. There's a through Trying line. Trying to eliminate all the Christmas trees. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a Christmas tree shortage, I think, right? That's one of the things that are not being stocked fast enough this holiday season, Christmas trees. Is there a menorah uh, shortage, Sam? Uh, as far as I know, there was plenty of menorahs this time of year. Mm. Um, uh, because, I mean, there's, uh, you know. You don't buy those every 
every year. Though. You don't you don't buy new ones every year. You usually <laughs> tend to not. There, there's generally not a huge run on menorahs. That uh, it's very convenient. Yeah, that's very convenient. Yeah. You know, excuse. Although I will say there is. We know what we're doing. Let's mm-hmm. put it that Curious way. that the supply chain did not affect the menorahs, huh? Well, I mean, listen, I know a guy that's... who can get me a, a menorah at uh, at wholesale, so uh, it's not an issue. No Antifa vigilante burned down the Fox News menorah this year. You know? Well, I mean, they or did, the but it lasted menorah. eight nights. <laughs> uh, it worked out well. That was well, the good thing about the menorah burning this it's year. Just, it's just good to see, you know, in the spirit of the founding of America, that there is a through line of, you know, Christian fundamentalists believing that it's oppression if they don't get to proselytize enough to people. But this is, but this, that dynamic is really the, um, the structure of all of the complaints about wokeism, about uh, infringing on, on, on free speech. It is the exact same thing. It is, it is an aggrievement that is set there because in any way there is inclusion that's what he's complaining about. He's claiming in 2000, and you know, we now have you know the um, uh, the benefit of hindsight and see that in fact Christianity has not been cleansed from the town square. Um, yes. It is not yet. But I mean, does anybody think that you know that that there has been any more cleansing of Christianity from the town square, particularly when we look at the Supreme Court uh, over the course of the past fifteen years? No, and this is the same thing. They are complaining about the idea that people are starting to respect uh, Islam uh, at that time, in particular, that uh, there's a diversity of perspectives that are starting to be introduced, that uh, gay people are actually like people are starting to talk about them getting married, all of these things. Um, it is the same structure when you hear other people complain about wokeism or, you know, CRT. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think that even in that one clip, she, you know, she turns the war on terror around to be like, then if the war on terror taught us anything, it's that we should respect Christians more. And that becomes like this sort of underlying, I guess, rationale around these kinds of agreement stories that like, we might just go too far in the wrong direction if we do things like CRT or affirmative action and end up in a world where, you know, Christian white males are the ones who feel oppressed and so any even step in that direction whether it's like not singing christmas songs in public school or like teaching them about slavery becomes like an encroachment or possible encroachment on the rights of a you know majority of silent americans who just want things to be like they always have been i guess but you know even that's nostalgia it's you know it's a it is a remembrance of a Christian Christmas tradition in America that is like usually just born from watching movies. Like, uh, it's a wonderful life. Yeah, it also erases power from the conversation on purpose, right? When was this? When 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 did this air? What year? I think it was two thousand five. Okay. I think was the uh, when we were on CNN. So like exactly right now, the what what this entire time period is doing is teaching us to respect all religions as if they are in equal footing in the eyes of the American people and in the way that the American Empire is currently exerting power in 2005 right i mean that's like that that that's the erasure that's on purpose uh, yeah i mean how you get all lives matter because black uh-huh. lives matter doesn't specifically speak to the you know the concerns of christmas and white people yeah on some level you know like uh this was the the big it was kira phillips was the the anchor the big proponent if i remember at the time o'reilly was a big war on christmas guy there was another guy I want to say Tony, uh, who somebody who went on to be, I think, one of Bush's um, uh, uh, spokespeople. And then there was another guy, and I can't remember his name, that w- even wrote a book about the war on Christmas at the time. Tucker Carlson is the, like, the descendant of that. I mean, he uh, has adopted that mantle. And it's more like things like COVID and it's and, and it's now things are a little bit more coded. It is more like normal people now instead of saying Christians, they would never say you're taking Jesus out of the thing, but you would say you're 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 attacking our values. Um, th- this is, you know, you, you wouldn't say at the time uh, wokeism, but you would say like this, you know, sort of uh, offensive insistence that because you're offended, other people can't celebrate um jesus in public school um and on one hand the interesting thing is from a cultural standpoint 
they've had to retreat a little bit right they have they have to layer another level of coding uh the wording the position's the same but the the, the wording is different but in a structural fashion in terms of the law they're actually making big strides there was no rifra uh or at least not as applied as it is today the religious freedom uh redemption act or whatever it is which essentially provides all these different loopholes to federal law if you are uh if you claim to be religious um and 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 this is the sort of like the dual track we're on they they are you know maybe losing a little ground culturally and uh but they are certainly gaining it uh in terms of, of the law uh which i don't know it's a little bit disturbing in that re respect um